morning, it is 8 o'clock ish. I'm here at Knott End on Sea and I'm going to walk the entire wire way. And what a day I picked to do it as well. Look at this weather, it is horrific. And it's got worse since I got out of the car. I got here, it started spitting, and now there's a gale force wind as well. So, isn't that pleasant? You must be sheltered by this wall at the moment. It's bad. It's 33 and a half miles altogether this walk. I've walked sections of it, but never the whole thing. And I've got 10 hours to do it. It's 8 o'clock now. I need to get to Abbeystead Reservoir by 6 o'clock this evening. Let's do it. going on and who's around but you can always miss a stray golf ball when you're on a golf course luckily because of lockdown it is pretty quiet although there are people playing on it which is quite nice to see things are getting back to some sort of normality and people are golfing away Now, if you're like me, then you find topography really, really interesting, especially the lie of the land. So right now, I'm on a levee, which has been built all the way along here as a flood defence from the very flat land, which is just over there. Then in front of that, we've got mud flats, and then the river wire, which is at this point more like an estuary, is just over there. The river wire floods all the time, especially through the winter, and you'll know that if you live anywhere near it. Just this last season, last flood season, we were down in St. Michael's and it was that close to going over the bridge and they've got flood defences there. I've never known a river threaten to burst its banks quite as much as the wire, even though they have all these flood defences like these levees. getting so warm now the weather could not be more different to what it was predicted to being it is now 9.03 I've been going just over an hour now and I've covered nearly eight kilometers so that's not not too bad still got a long way to go but we're doing well My feet are so wet walking down this footpath. Luckily, I've got my waterproof socks on, which is helping out, but I'm not sure it picks up on camera. But the whole of the path and all the grasses around here are just flooded with water, probably from the sea, I imagine, since I think it comes up here and washes. So, oh, my feet are so soggy. over the place because of this wind I'm walking through a field with a few cows in at the moment I'm always quite apprehensive when doing so I'm just going past it's all right <laughs> you always hear one or two stories a year of walkers being trampled by cows and although it's a rarity it's always worth being quite cautious when you do come through fields with any livestock in but especially cows and horses 
because you never know what they're going to do and they're definitely bigger than you but these ones are definitely definitely friendly and they're just chilling out in the sun for now <laughs> Not too far off coming into St. Michael's now, but what I've just spotted, which is good news, is let me get it right that wind turbine there. It is massive and it's the wind turbine which is at Julie's Cheese. I know that for a fact, there's no wind turbines around here which are bigger than that one, so that must be it. That is a very good sign for this walk. We've got 20 kilometers under our belt so far, there's still 35 kilometers to go but the going is getting a lot easier than it was back down on the beach. We're onto these trails now, nicely paved back lanes. It's becoming a lot easier to get a few more miles covered. is now coming at me as you can tell from the funky hairstyle I've got going on but look what we're passing it is Julie's wind turbine which is a brilliant brilliant sign because we're nearly into Garstang So for any of you who don't know, this is a new housing estate which has popped up outside Garstang in the last year or two, I'm not exactly sure, um, but it's very, very new. And it's interesting to see what they've done with it because this is the path they've put in that runs through. So uh, the wireway would originally run through a field, I assume here, because this was all farmer's land. It's amazing how quickly these things pop up. You know, two years ago, this would have been a field asking for planning permission and uh, two years later well there's people living here they are popping up everywhere these estates and it's in two minds as to what you think about it because at the end of the day people need to live somewhere and I think it's at some point we'd all have lived on uh, an estate would have been built and we would have moved on to it at some point regardless of where you live houses have to be built but yeah it's a, it's a diverse debate especially in Garstang as well as I'm sure you'll know if you do live locally but as far as I can see they're quite nice. At this point the whole social distancing thing is causing a couple of problems. You see, these are quite narrow walkways. Therefore, people who are walking in front of me, I can't really pass them. And I'm, I'm, I'm kind of quite a stickler for keeping that two meter distance. I don't want to break that at all. Um, yeah, it just means I'm getting a few people in front of me who are kind of, you know, walking at a leisurely pace. I'm storming up behind, and then I have to reduce my pace to a slightly more leisurely one for a bit, but. I'll just treat it as a break for my legs, but it's quite funny because I, I hadn't really thought about it too much. six hours in to this challenge now and I've made it to Scorson which is pretty much where I thought I'd be by this point. We've stopped for some lunch, I've got a sweet chilli chicken wrap so that'll be quite nice. A, a sausage roll which I couldn't really wait to eat and an oasis which is standing up the camera at the moment so I can't show you that on camera. 
I can stop for a break, probably 20 minutes, and then keep going. We've got four hours to make it to Abbey Said. I don't think we're going to need that, but we'll find out. It's amazing how stiff you get just stopping for 15 minutes or so. So all I did, stop for 15 minutes for lunch, and my legs have completely seized up. But good news is, out of the 56 kilometers that I have when I started this, I've only got just under 20 of them left. So it should be pretty easy from now on. I've now started jogging a couple of these sections, especially the ones that are quite flat like this, just to try and make it some time really. This morning was really quite slow going. A lot of the wire way down at the very start didn't seem to exist properly. Um, and I spent a lot of time trampling through fields and through grass that was knee height, if not a bit longer. And it really hampered the amount of distance that I covered in those first, well, particularly actually the second and third hour, because the first hour was all right. So I'm trying to jog a few bits now just to make up the time. It is now 10 to three. So we've got three hours still to get up to Abbeystead Reservoir, which is where the wire starts. So I'm currently under the M6. This is the diversion for when Nansnook Bridge was taken down. So you used to walk over Nansnook Bridge and down. Now you come underneath the motorway and then round and across a few fields. They've done quite a good job, to be honest, of making this footpath, which for uh, a council is high praise. Yeah, so we just bob through this gate, which is up here, across the fields, and then we're back on track. And I'd say it's a nicer route, to be fair, than uh, Nansnook Bridge was. gone through Wireside Fisheries and as I'm sure you probably all know one of the first things that you could do when lockdown got lifted was go fishing. So all these little fishing ponds and I've seen a couple of others during the day are full with very happy fishermen. I've tried fishing a couple of times it's not really my cup of tea but I can see why you'd enjoy it. <laughs> Sat by a relaxing lake catching a few fish every now and then making yourself a cup of tea. Sounds like a nice way to spend an afternoon. back and it's causing problems with my hair. As you can see we are back in the middle of nowhere and we're coming up to the source of the river wire. This walk is finally coming to an end. We've done just over 30 miles at this point. It's been a very long day. We've got a section through a bit of woodland. We're going to follow the first bit of the river all the way up and we should come to Abbeystead Reservoir where the wire begins. And we've done it. 30 odd miles later and here we are. That is the source of the river wire. I'm here, Abbeystead Reservoir is just up there and it flows off down and creates the river wire. It's quite amazing actually to see that. <laughs> what a day it has been. 
I am so, so exhausted now. It's been really hard going, especially the start bit down by the sea. Some of the grass down there was so long, there were so many thorns, nettles, all sorts. But we have made it and we've walked the entire River Wire in 8 hours and 28 minutes. Now that isn't bad going. I hope you enjoyed the video today. If you did, then please do like and subscribe and you get to see more videos like this.